Welcome back to another video. Today we're working on my 2007 GT500 once again. And we're kind of knocking out one of the last bits and pieces I need to do, which is an axle bearing. So let me go ahead and show you guys what's going on and how we're going to fix it. All right, so this is what a bad axle bearing kind of feels like when you grab the top and the bottom of the wheel. I don't know if you guys can see that or hear it. That's not good. So I've been having some high speed vibration on this car, and I'm pretty sure that's what the problem is. I actually noticed this almost a year ago, which sounds really bad, but I totally kind of forgot about it. I was doing a bunch of other stuff to the car and decided to revisit it. All right, so gonna jump in real quick here. The symptoms I'm showing are not actually, they could be from a wheel bearing, but mine were not from the wheel bearing. It's the way the true track on this car is set up. Um, I'll explain at the end of the video what is causing the play. However, this is still a good video on how to go over and replace a wheel bearing in this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it and let it run through. But that's not the problem that I'm having. And it's not really a problem per se, but now you know. So without further ado, let's get back to it. So let's go ahead and show you the parts real quick. The parts that I'm using are gonna be down in the description. So we need a rear axle bearing remover set right here. This is just a rental, it's like 50 bucks. The rental, you're trying to get your money back if you need it, whatever. Um, the size I need is this one right here. And that's gonna be used to pull our bearing out of the back of the car. So this particular one is made by SKF, that's part number. And again, check the description down below. I'm gonna have all the part numbers and stuff that I used. Um, you're gonna need a new axle seal because this needs to come out in order for that to come out. You cannot reuse the axle seal. And then new diff oil fluid because the stuff that we're using is gonna get drained out as we have to use it to access the diff to get the axle out. So let's go ahead and continue working now. A couple of things that are gonna be different on mine that are not gonna be the same on yours, depending on how your setup is. I have an Eden True Track differential in here. So to get my axles out, it's pretty simple. To get yours out, it's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna need to Google a video or something else on how to remove your particular um, axles from your differential housing. So that's pretty much that. It's gonna be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, just a little time consuming. I'm gonna get this knocked out. So without further ado, let's hop into it. First thing I'm gonna do is open up the rear diff cover. Uh, during the fluid, well that's training, I'm gonna start taking off the wheels and tires. So I'm gonna throw you guys on time lapse until we get into stuff that's more technical or I need to actually walk you through stuff and you'll kind of be able to see what we're doing from there. All right, so running to the car, I decided I wanna go over a couple things right before I start time lapse. And first couple of irritations on the Mustang GT I had, I did not have this problem, but on this car, for whatever reason, the way the geometries are, I do. So things to note, and we gotta get this diff cover off in order to get access to everything. In order to get this off, the sway bar needs to come out, uh, not the sway bar, the pan hard bar needs to come out, and the sway bar needs to come out. So the sway bar is hooked up by two bolts right in here, one there, and one on this side, and it doesn't need to come off the axle, it just needs to drop out of the way. Once that's off, we can get the pan hard bar out. You just need this one to come out. You can leave this side in. It'll swing it out of the way once again, and then we can get to this cover and actually pull it all the way off. Um, this has to come out because this bolt backs directly into this bar and pretty much there's no way to get around it So otherwise it wouldn't need to take it off, but here we are So now that that's done. Let me go ahead and hop in the time-lapse. We're gonna get this taken apart And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna pull off this wheel just to make life easier Eventually we're gonna have to take the brake caliper off and some other stuff, but you know, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and get started
All right, so I got the wheel off, and now what we got to do is remove the brake and this guy, and then we'll take the axle out via popping out of the diff. So, brakes held on pretty much. I leave mine one solid piece. I just take off the two bracket bolts back here. There's one there and one right here. If you guys can see that. And once those are off, we can put this out to the side, take off our brake disc, and keep on going from there. All right, so now the wheel's off and everything else we're underneath here. So the way my diff is set up is I just have this little uh, snap ring I pull out, and this is the Eden True Track, and that'll bring out, well, you'll see there's a little like spacer in there that I can pop the axle in and take out the C-clip. On um, some of the other ones, um, more traditional axles, there's a couple pins and other stuff. I'm not super familiar with that process, so again, go ahead and Google like changing out gears or something on a 2007 Mustang, and you'll find what you need to find on how to remove the axles. But without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and do this on mine. Let's go back time lapse and knock this out. So with that, the axle slid out super easy, and here's our axle seal. So all you gotta do is pop that out. You're gonna need a, something like this, like an axle seal puller tool or a flathead, and you just kind of hook it in under the beefy part of the axle seal, and you just kind of work. See how it popped a little bit. Just kind of work it out. And I'm gonna work this a little bit, get that out, and then we're gonna use this tool and we're gonna basically slide it in. It'll slide in like this, flatten out, and then we'll get the appropriate size washer to pull it against the corner right here and get this whole thing out. So without further ado, let's keep going. All right, so there we have it. I did not realize I needed a slide hammer to make this thing work, so I had to run out and grab one real quick, but you're gonna need a slide hammer. So the old one's out, we're gonna go ahead and grab the new one, kind of line it up and uh, pop it in. It's amazing how quick things go with the right tools. So. Pretty much got the new one in. I did grease it up and it's either gonna stay greased, which is, I know it's not going to, um, but I just wanted to have something for breaking. And then the axle fluid will eventually wash it all out and it'll just be normal axle gear, gear oil in there again, but I didn't want to put it in dry. And we got our new seal installed and we should be done. So a slide hammer, absolute must, a rubber mallet. And then I just used the puller that had the washer on the other side to use the slide hammer the opposite direction and pound it in and it worked out great. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide our axle back in and start the reassembly. So these are pretty new axles, something. At the end of this video, I'm gonna go over my full setup so you guys know what I have done to my car in terms of rear end stuff, because it is pertinent to this video, but um, something to be aware of. So you can see this is where the ring is of where it's been uh, riding on the bearing. So that's this guy right here, sits right there. Um, if you've had this problem where it's gotten really bad and there's a visit, like you can feel it where it's like lost material, that's bad. You're probably gonna need a new axle. Mine absolutely smooth i don't see any lost material or feel anything like grooves or anything so i think it was just the old bearing because I, I did leave this in here when i put in this new axle there's a moser um it's a moser or strand i think it's moser uh 30 31 spline but it's their full tang there's no like weird neck downs and stuff like the stock ones so let's go and put this back in and uh, keep working
quick rundown of what you just saw me do. So I went ahead and threw my differential um, pieces back in, just the C-clip spacer and then the, um, the cover and, um, yeah, uh, I can't think what it's called now. The thing that holds it in, the snap ring. So that's in. Um, then I went ahead and cleaned up the surfaces real quick. I've done this several times at this point and I've never had this diff leaks. Um, and I've done it this way pretty much every single time. Um, cleaning off the razor blade or something else, whatever you want, I don't really care. And then uh, use gray RTV, which is what I use. Clean off the cover, put on the cover, smush it on there and then hand tight, let it sit for an hour and then you can torque it down. Don't fill it for 24 hours according to the instructions. Um, do that with what you will. I usually wait the full 24 because I'm not really in a rush. Um, but some people do it sooner and don't have problems. I'm not one of those people that does that sooner. So that's done. Earlier you saw me twisting this guy around. I noticed that it was like unevenly spaced uh, thread wise. I don't really like that. So I went ahead and tightened it. I realized I just adjusted everything. That's fine. Um, once I get the car back down, I'll go ahead and readjust the axle so it's centered. It's no big deal. Um, other than that, pretty much it. So this is the Shea brace on here. If you guys remember from forever ago, and it's supposed to help with keeping everything from twisting. If you guys don't know, these axle tubes are just stuck in here and there's a little like weld thing, but they're more or less press fit. And so when you have one arm up here getting pushed back and the only other two points of contact with these two lower arms, it creates a rotating motion. It wants to push this guy, rotate it forward, and this guy wants to rotate backwards as a result um, with the differential and everything the way it works. So the shape brace helps, supposed to keep that from rotating. And then I also, you can either weld the axle tubes, which some people do. I decided to pin mine because I'm not proficient with a welder. And I basically stuck uh, four bolts on either side, threw it, threaded it. Um, and now that's holding my diff and it's been fine. Haven't had any issues. So that's pretty much that. Um, we're gonna go ahead next, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the brake back on. And then I'm gonna put the wheel back on and we're gonna give her a wiggle and see how it feels. I don't know if that's gonna fix it, but at least now we have a new wheel bearing, at least we shall see. Um, hopefully that fixes the slop though. All right, well, they're not torqued down, but they're tight enough. And I went ahead and wiggled back and forth and I saw that same amount of play. So I can only imagine that the other end of the axle is where the play is happening and that's inside the differential. However, what doesn't make any sense to me is that it's brand new diff and I can't see where it would have gotten play from. So that's really weird, but still got yeah, the same like A little bit of wobble going on, which I don't, I really don't know where this coming from. Okay, so you saw me just wiggling it around. I just got back from checking the other side and they both have the same amount of wobble. Brand new wheel bearing now, so it's not that, or axle bearing. I can only imagine something in the diff is letting the axle, because remember it's a full long axle that runs to the center diff and that's letting it move up and down just a slight little bit. Um, I don't know if that's normal or not, to be honest, but what's frustrating is that this is a brand new diff. Um, I guess it's got a little, about a year on it now, but I didn't do anything different. I put it, went ahead and did, old diff was the uh, same one, had some play. Uh, I had messed up fluid on that one, put a new one in. This one's kind of doing the same thing. So that's very weird. Not sure what's up with that, but um, yeah, I don't know. Well, it kind of sucks that there's still some play in there, but it is what it is. I'm gonna go get this thing back together and we're gonna finish everything up. So it's been roughly an hour. Um, as you can see, this is kind of tacky and it's not really uh, loose anymore or still um, super soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts down. I believe they torque down to 25 foot pounds. I'm just gonna do it by feel. I've done it a million times at this point. I don't really care anymore. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and torque these guys down and then start putting everything back together and then wait the full 24, or pretty close to it. At some point tomorrow, I'm gonna go ahead and refill it with diff fluid, and that'll be that. So let's go ahead and knock it out.
Alrighty, well, aside from relining our axle and the fluid, it's pretty much all buttoned up. So let's go ahead and take this opportunity. I want to go ahead and go over with you guys everything we've got going on to the diff. So you guys know if you are trying to replicate this setup or whatever, um, is what we got going on. So we're going to start the internals and work our way out. Uh, the actual axle housing itself is stock except for being pinned. So that helped out there. Um, bushing wise, we're on a poly, uh, poly upper diff bushing right here. I have a video on that. You can see a little red poking out. And then a poly upper adjustable control arm from BMR. Uh, we got uh, solid lower control arms and solid mount, meaning just an eyelet right here. So not the best for a daily driver, but it works for what I use it for. I think I'm probably gonna swap to a poly bushing on one side, um, just because that'll quiet it up a little bit. It does get a decent amount of NVH from the axle itself, just kind of cruising down the road. So there's a little bit of noise source from there. Um, adjustable BMR uh, panar bar, stock sway bar, sway bar relocation mounts to get the, um, make it clear the 15s. And then you have to trim the shock mount a little bit here so it can actually, uh, well, mount and not get messed up. Um, for bracing, we have the Shape Performance diff brace back here. And it seems to be doing a good job. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, our uh, lower control arm relocation brackets to push it down further. It helps with anti-squat. So each of these pins is basically a level of anti-squat higher up. The more it'll squat, lower down, the less it'll squat based on the geometry of it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, internal wise, still running 30, 31 spline axles. However, they are the upgraded ones from Moser and a Eaton True Track differential, 373 gears. I redid that over the winter and I tightened up the tolerances from where they were at previously. And between the gears and everything, it's been very quiet back here, no issues. So I do believe that a lot of the gear wind issues come from too loose of a gear tolerance and it starts eating it up after a while. Other than that, it's really about it. So pretty basic setup, adjustable rear shocks and whatnot, and then the 15s, and it seems to hook up pretty well. So that's pretty much that. And I am gonna meet up with you guys tomorrow when we go to refill this thing, and we need to readjust our axle right here to make sure it's centered. I usually just eyeball it, it's pretty much how it works. I'll go from one side to the other, make sure she's sitting where it's supposed to be sitting, on the ground, of course, and I can reach under here and get it with a wrench, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, that's about it. See you guys tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. Everything seems to be dried, so we're going to move around up here. And this is your fill port right there in the car. And it's just a 3 8 inch ratchet. Uh, slides in there. It's a real pain in the butt to do with one hand. And um, yeah, you can pop it in and get it. So you just back it out basically. And we're going to go ahead and fill it with diff fluid. All right, so recent of the axle, car's on the ground, and it looks like she's good to go. So I did a little more research into the true track and with that little bit of wiggle I'm feeling. And let me throw up this picture for you real quick. So if you look at it, you can see how it's kind of, the true track is a totally mechanical diff. There's no like clutch packs or anything, and it's still a differential, so it's called a helical diff. And you can, there's the two, there's the three little gears that surround two bigger gears, and those two bigger gears are kind of floating there. There's nothing like specifically holding them in place. And from there, they pretty much are what the axle splines slip onto. So on Eden's uh, site, they have a pretty cool video of how it works. But what I think is happening, uh, there's gotta be some kind of backlash in those bigger gears to, in order for it, the whole thing to work and not bind up. So I have a suspicion that's where my play is coming from. Um, had I known that previously, I'm not entirely sure I would have gone with this differential to begin with. I don't really like that. But it is what it has been holding up to quite a few launches at the track without any problems. So I guess it is what it is. Well, as you can see, cars back together. Just got back from a little test drive. Got the diff fluid refilled, recentered our axle and everything like that. So I'm just kind of giving everything a quick once over. And I didn't take you guys along for the ride because I just kind of wanted to focus on the car. And honestly, having the camera there, it's just a little distracting. 
general in a CFL. So everything feels pretty good. I did want to check the ice tank real quick, make sure temps look pretty good. Um, but we won't know for sure until it's on the road, really. But yeah, so got circulation, so she's flowing appropriately. Um, other than that, though, I just kind of wanted to check everything over. So I was curious if I'd see a different with the belt. And I was seeing it's pretty warm today. I'm gonna check the DA and I'll put it on the screen to compare it to like when we're at the drag strip. But yeah, you got the gates belt right there doing its thing. But it was making around uh, 16 and a half, 16 pounds of boost in third gear. Second gear seems to be a little bit less, third a little more. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. I'm starting to wonder if the increased cams are really showing their head in the upper RPM, which is why we're not seeing as much as normal, especially the drag strip where it stays around 4,000 RPM or higher. And that could be a reason why the boost doesn't seem to be as high as I'm expecting it to be. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna kind of call it as it is. Everything seems good. No overheating crazy wires. Relay is nice and cool. Everything seems good. And um, there you have it. But just listen to it though, like, man, she sounds awesome. Freaking love this thing. But, Cable seems good, good. Connector's cool to the touch, so I think everything's good to go, guys. That's gonna do it for this video. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.